This is the Pooja Anger Deep Podcast. From 98.1 CHFI Studios in Toronto, Canada. Hey Toronto, this is Ed Sheeran. This is Kelly Clarkson. Hi, this is Brian Adams. This is Adele. This is Madonna. It's Michael Bublé. And you're listening to the Pooja Anger Deep Show. It's fun. They're amazing. Good night. It's National Opposite Day. See what I just did there? I didn't say good morning. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. It's National Opposite Day. So this is the day to do everything opposite from the way you would normally do things. So I've got some ideas for you. I already said we should start with dinner for breakfast because how fun is it to have breakfast for dinner? That's the best. That's I the do that anyways. It doesn't best. have to be opposite day. I it's, love it. Cereal for breakfast is one of my favorite things. Yeah. I love doing that. Okay. Um, how about this? Get up on the wrong side of the bed. Uh, what is there a right side? I guess the one that you're supposed to just crawl out of that yes. you're sleeping on? Yes. However, I think we all know someone who gets up on the wrong side of the bed every, <laughs> every day. <morning. laughs> and maybe they need to get up on the right side of the bed today. If your partner's still sleeping, do you have to then like climb over them to yes. climb over the other? <laughs> yes. Okay. You have the right idea, producer Excellent. Steph. Okay. Uh, what about this? Eat dessert first Always. instead of last. Always. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So you get filled up on, you know, pie and cake. Yeah. And you don't even need to get to the veggies. Nope. And your protein. No, it's okay. Okay. That's not a bad idea. Um, Put your shoes on the wrong feet <laughs> or on your hands Ooh. and hand walk Even to work. Even better. Yes. <laughs> yes like and handstand walk. If you could do a handstand, <laughs> bonus points. This is how you celebrate opposite day. Okay. And, and put your gloves on your feet. <laughs> And then try to scrape your vehicle. <laughs> that and put your toque on your bottom. <laughs> oh, you're really good at this. Okay, opposite good. Day. <laughs> Excellent. I'm celebrating. How about this? Do everything with your non-dominant hand. Oh, that's a disaster. Oh my! Mm. I don't think I. Sometimes you know, with with um, my toddlers, I'm holding the babies, and I have to use my right hand to like stir. Oh, because you're left-handed. Pot. Yes. Yeah. I can't do it. I'm yeah. like oh, I. I drop everything. Yep. It's impossible. It's so Scissors. hard. I know. Oh, the simplest thing. Yes. Okay. Um. What about uh, saying goodbye when greeting people instead of hello? Or <laughs> do that all day. Today. And then when you're leaving, you say hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello. What about walking backwards? You're supposed to. It's good for your calves. It is. You can walk backwards today. I, I did an entire segment on yeah. how walking backwards is the key to the future. So walk backwards into a store, say goodbye, <laughs> do your shopping, and then walk backwards out and say hello. <laughs> they may call someone because they might think you need some help. So it's opposite day. Yes. You guys are doing a really good job. Nah. Uh, don't, it's not rude day. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> From CHFI Studios, it's the Pooja and Gurdip Podcast. Okay, have you heard of a scalp facial? This is the latest trend to take over TikTok, and this is how it works. They start by analyzing your scalp and creating a custom plan for you, and then you get a massage, and then they cleanse the scalp like they would cleanse the face in a facial. And then you go into your physical exfoliant, which felt so good. She got every nook and cranny, and then you got a steam, which felt really good after that intense exfoliant. I mean, it's a process. It's actually a four-step process. There's a lot involved. And they're using skincare, you know, stuff that you would use on your face. They're using on your scalp. So it's good for your scalp. And I guess in this multi-step facial, uh, it's supposed to tackle things like dandruff, inflammation, thinning hair, and really just help you feel lighter and really just help your scalp. They actually will show you a before and after. So you get to see what your scalp looked like before you got the treatment. And then you see the after. And according to this TikTok video, it's a huge difference. You're like, what is on my scalp? I have to admit, out of all the things to think about self-care, I never thought about my scalp. Have if you, they, producer Steph? If they've ever sho- if they showed me a picture of my scalp, I wouldn't even <laughs> know if that was my scalp. I'd be like, is, I would just ass- <laughs> I guess, like I've never looked at my scalp. You're so like, I would totally believe whatever picture they showed me. You're like, wasn't me? No, <laughs> no clue. Yeah, yeah you're sure. already. De- you're like, what? That's not me. And you know what? Depending on what that before looks like, right? you might want to pretend like it's not you because yeah. I don't know what they're gonna find up there. Yeah, I think you got the pictures mixed up. <laughs> like, is it the same as with you know when you go to get a facial for your face there's things like you know blackheads and your pores and you, you want to see them you you're aware them. of it yes is that what it looks like up I don't there know. i don't know if i want to know yeah and uh, is this one of those things where it's a very intimate relationship with the person who's giving you this scalp facial because 
they're going to see things that you haven't even seen. And like, I don't know, suddenly I'm feeling embarrassed about my scalp and I don't even know why. <laughs> you scalp shaming? Yes. And, and essentially, they're supposed to help you with things that would, you know, maybe be embarrassing. So it's supposed to be great. They're offering it in Toronto. Uh, here's the price. Are you ready? Uh-oh. How much do you think that should cost? How, how long is it? Uh, ends up being about an hour. Probably two hundred dollars. Okay. All right. Well, then this is a deal. Uh, <laughs> a scalp facial will cost anywhere between one hundred and twenty and one hundred and sixty-five dollars. Okay. It lasts an hour. Do you, you get ta- to bring the pictures home? <laughs> Put them in a frame. Put them up on the fridge and be like, "Look, look at mommy's new scalp." The Pooja and Grady podcast from ninety-eight point one CHFI. You know, it's funny. I never skied as a kid. And then as an adult, I'm like, ooh, let, let me try this. Yeah, is there anything you uh, maybe didn't do as a kid that you all of a sudden wanted to try as an adult? Boss man? I did. You know what? My wife bought me a, uh, an Xbox for Christmas because last year I said, you know what? I think the video game thing has passed me by. She goes, no, you're never too old. I love so that I, she encouraged you so, <laughs> to play video games. So I got an Xbox for Christmas. And so then I bought a golf game and was playing with that and then I was talking to my friend Dave on a, on a call we were on a FaceTime and he uh, he said I should get one we could play golf remotely Oh. So we did. and You're uh, an online gamer. Uh, well. With a headset and everything? Well then, bought the headset. Oh gosh. It took us about a half hour to get the connection, the audio connection. Dave, are you there? Over. <laughs> so finally <laughs> over. <laughs> over. Finally he's on and we couldn't get the game to connect and his son was visiting him and he goes, "Oh, you're so embarrassing. Dad, move, 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 click. The game's online now. So now <laughs> we're playing we're playing video games online, but it was so embarrassing when we, we couldn't connect. So the... you didn't do that as a kid? You never played? I wasn't a kid. I mean, I played There was, there was no internet when Blair was a kid. Come no, on. <laughs> we just had fire. <laughs> <laughs> we played with fire. <laughs> and a stick. It was great. <laughs> I'm glad you grew out of that one. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I am. So are you hooked now? Are you a fan? I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer. We play. I'm like, a gamer. A, we, we play. Oh, yeah. That might be a step too far. I'm, I'm going pro. I'm going pro. <laughs> can I can I tell you though? This is going to make me sound ancient. Like when I I stopped playing video games 20 years ago. When I look at the new fangled controllers, like <laughs> I am so intimidated. Same. Because I grew up with like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, even Nintendo 64, GameCube. Like there's so many buttons. I can't. I can't even play it with my nephews. Very high tech. I'm. Well, there's backspin on the left. You pull one left and then hit the X and mm. the that you can backspin. You play soccer, don't you? I do. Yeah, backspin gave it away. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how if you just touch all the buttons all at once, something happens. Mash and the sometimes keypad? you win. Yes. Is that how you play? Yeah, that's how that's I a choose life to play. Right there. Yeah, Push right? all the buttons at once. <laughs> that's actually kind of a good question, though. Like late to the party, things you've missed out on uh, when you were a kid that you, you know, you're trying as an adult. For me, it was skiing. Mm. I use that as a past tense. You know what it was for me? I think it's, um, it's hula hooping. I never hula hooped as a child. Wait, hold on. You hula hoop now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about the hula hoop When now. and where? <laughs> You're like, ooh, it's time to hula hoop. Gotta feed my babies. No, first. Hold See, on. It's hula hoop time. You think you know me so well, but no, you didn't know about my hula hoop obsession, did you? No, I actually got one because uh, I heard they were good for, like, working out. If you get a weighted one. So it's oh, weighted. Dear. So it's really heavy. Pooj, you've been, I hate to tell you this, you've been duped. <laughs> Did you buy it in a back alley from a guy in a trench coat? <laughs> no, but I will tell you this, it's uh, it's very tough to do and it hurts. It hurts because it's so heavy. And now your hips are jacked. Yeah, but I'm but I'm good at it. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got jacked hip. I'm good at it. And as a child, it never really worked for me. I didn't understand the whole hula hooping thing. I wasn't into it. I'm sh- not sure you do currently. <laughs> <laughs> the Pooja Ingerdeep Podcast. This is the Pooja Ingerdeep Podcast. Have you heard of the orange peel theory? This is all to test your relationship. This is how it works. Simply, people are asking their partners to peel oranges for them. And their partner's response is supposed to be an indication of how healthy the relationship is. If they're willing to peel an orange for you, then this small act of service and your partner's willingness to do so is supposed to indicate a healthy relationship. But if they refuse, then it's a major red flag. Red flag. If you ask your partner to peel an orange for you and they refuse, that's the end of the relationship. According to the orange peel theory, which is all over social media. So it basically has girlfriends who are putting their partners to the test. They record them and ask them this question. 
like, hey, babe, can you peel me an orange? Or I feel like an orange. Can you peel it for me? And just to see the reactions on social media, it's hilarious because, I mean, there are legitimate circumstances in which the partner doesn't want to peel the orange because they're like, what are you doing that you can't peel the orange for yourself? I don't know. Is that a red flag? Like, producer Steph, if you asked your partner to peel an orange for you, would he do it? I think he would do it, but he would look at me like, why am I doing this for you if we're both standing like in front of the fridge? Yeah, you're both in the kitchen. You're not doing anything. You ask him to get you an orange and to peel it. He's going to yeah, do it. Yeah, I think he would do it, but he would look at me funny. Like, I, I think I'm trying to think about it for me and my partner, Paul. And I think that I think he'd do it for me. I think that he he's the type of person where he wants to like make if I say I'm hungry, he wants to like make me something because he's like, oh, you're, you know, he knows I've got a thousand things going on. He's very sweet that way. However, if he saw me just standing there, yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling even my sweet, sweet husband would be like, and what's wrong with your hands? <laughs> Why can't you peel your own orange? Yeah. We also have two children. You want me to peel them for them too? Like, yeah. what's, what's the problem? Bossman Blair, you would I do, would it? do it. I wouldn't think twice. How come? Because I love peeling oranges and I'm really good at it. I'm like a Benny Hanna chef, really fast. <laughs> cut the top, cut the bottom, and then slice it really quickly. And I would, I'd say, oh, yeah, done. Air. How about really? that? Really? Yeah. So for you, the idea of your wife Karen asking you to peel an orange is like challenge accepted. Oh, challenge accepted. But if she asks me to rub her feet, not interested, move on. <laughs> So I don't know what that says about our relationship. Coming to social media next, the rubbing feet (laughs) challenge and whether or not that makes you a good husband or not. From CHFI Studios, it's the Pooja and Gurdip podcast. I am very, very lucky that I have parents who live close by. They live in Mississauga, so they're about 30 minutes away. I see them a lot. They're over every weekend, and they are just over the moon to be able to spend time with their grandchildren, and my kids love them so much, and I am so lucky that they help me. They help me a lot, Uh, and with, you know, toddlers running around and having to feed both at the same time and, you know, all the things because they're in such a routine— You need another pair of hands sometimes where, you know, you have somebody who's also following that routine with you. And for the most part, my parents do what I tell them to do for the most part. But for some reason, my parents think it's okay to give my kids cake for breakfast and for, you know, snacks and donuts and all the things like they like to bring goodies when they come over for themselves But then the kids will be playing and out of nowhere, they'll be like, oh, Sia, come here. And then they'll just give them a donut. And I'm like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Did you have cake for breakfast as a kid? No. That's weird. No. And it's interesting (laughs) because the things that they didn't do with us when they were raising us, they now do with the grandkids. It's bizarre, isn't it? It's almost almost like payback or Mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, now they're high on sugar. Here, put them to bed. Good luck with that. Bye. See Mm -hmm. you next week. Yeah. Uh, And I love my parents. They They are so awesome. I'm so grateful. But I also know that in that moment, I can't really say anything. Like, I haven't been able to express to them, you know, I really have worked on this schedule. I'm trying not to give them too much sugar. I'm trying to get them to eat healthy. This is kind of ruining it, mom, because I'm just so grateful. But at the same time, she's ruining things for me. Why don't you talk to her? Just be like, how come? I just want to know how come we didn't have cake for breakfast. Like, why, when you were a parent, mom, were we not having cake for breakfast? Because, you know, I'm going to get that look from my mom, and I've seen it already, (laughs) where she's like, really? You're going to tell me? What like I raised you and you're going to try to tell me what's right and wrong. And you raised your children without cake for (laughs) breakfast, mom. (laughs) Yeah. And her answer would probably be like, and guess what? You turned out just fine. And even if we gave you cake, you would have turned out just fine. (laughs) Yeah, it would have been fine. And she's probably right. The Pooja Ingerdeep podcast. The nearly impossible question. With Pooja and Gurdip. I don't know if there's something in the water this week in uh, the Rogers campus, but I always test these questions in the room. You guys give me some weird answers this week, man. You guys are nowhere close. And yesterday, the listeners, you guys got it like almost instantly, yet this room was befuddled. This didn't go well when you presented it to us. And I also didn't want you to give me the answer, so I just kept guessing ridiculous things. Mm -hmm. It got pretty ridiculous by the end of it. I had to give you guys lots of hints. The question is, more than 65% of Canadian men admit to doing this. Uh, Mark from Brynbrook, what do you think it is? Uh, It's a weird one. Picking your nose? Picking your (laughs) nose. Wow, you think more than two-thirds of men admit to that? Yeah. (laughs) I think most men do it. I don't know if two-thirds are admitting to it. (laughs) 
<laughs> They're all just lying about it. <laughs> uh, great guess, Mark. That's not it. Thanks for the call. All right, guys. Have a great morning. Nisha from Brampton. So do you know the answer to our nearly impossible question? They wear the girlfriend or their mother's underwear. Oh, my. 65%. <laughs> oh, my. Two-thirds of Canadian men. <laughs> yes. So by odds, that means one of Blair or I. Or both. Yes. Blair? No judge. <laughs> <laughs> And you thought that, my guesses were? Yeah, uh, she, she's almost outdone Pooja. Almost. <laughs> uh, Nisha, I'm sorry, that's not it. Okay, I'll give it. Okay, bye. okay, bye. Thanks, Nisha. Hey, let's jump uh, north to Orangeville. And, Nicole, what's your guess for us this morning? Um, I had two that came to mind right away, so I'm trying to pick between the two. And I'm going to guess getting whacked. <laughs> getting whacked? <laughs> More than 65% yes. of Canadian men admit to getting waxed. You know okay. what? It's yes. not bad. It's probably you the most what? reasonable guess so yes. far. Yeah. Absolutely, because some men, you know, have to get their back waxed and some don't. Yeah. And I know some of my friends' husbands and, and some that do, some that don't. So they're like, okay, maybe I have to do something with, like, self-grooming. <laughs> Manscaping's a thing. I, I had my chest waxed in university for a charity initiative. And never again. There you go. No, I actually did it a couple more times just for fun. <laughs> it was, I like the thrill of it. It hurts so good. <laughs> TMI. Uh, hey, what's your other guess, Nicole? The other guess I had was getting, like, a pedicure. It was all self-grooming related. Mm. I like those guesses. Yeah, I'm great in the guesses. category for both. Uh, not it, though. Thanks for the call. Have a good morning. Thanks. Karen from Markham, do you know the answer to our nearly impossible question? My guess is crying. Can you be more specific? Men crying? movie you got yeah! it oh two-thirds of men admit to crying during movies how did you know uh you know what the radio's been on for a while i walked in the room heard the question i thought first thing that popped into my head come on no, you're really good at this do you have men in your life that cry during movies maybe <laughs> it's okay. Mark? No, there's no shame in the game i i'll admit i cried during movies tv shows even commercials sometimes there was a kleenex yeah. commercial a couple years ago it really got me <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, I think I, it's nice to have someone I, cry during it, a movie or whatever. It shows your sensitive side. You're in you have touch a heart. with your emotions. You're yeah, an empath. Totally. Yes. I agree. I, I don't want to sit there and be all stoic during the last scene of Titanic. Come on now. Um, <laughs> congratulations. You nailed it. Thank you. It was fun. Thanks, have a great Karen. day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. All right. Love it. Crying during movies. Yes. I love it, too. And I, I appreciate you, that about you. And I bet you, like, a bunch of people who are not part of that 65% are lying about it. Thanks for listening to the Pooja and Gurdip podcast. Listen to Pooja and Gurdip live weekday mornings from 5 to 9. Only on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's perfect music mix.